Hi everyone, uh, so here's a pretty big haul of art supplies, but it's not something I just purchased all at once. It's something that I've accumulated over the last few months. I mean, some of those things I bought last year, I just never shared. And most of them, I just waited till they were on sale and made sure that I got them for a really good price. At this point, unless I have some art supplies that need to be replenished, I tried not to buy anything because I really don't need much more any anymore. But um, if there's something I'd like to try, I put in a virtual shopping cart of whatever website I'm shopping on and um, I wait till it's on sale. And sometimes I wait for months and months and months, but I want to make sure I get a really good deal on it. So most of these, I got a really good deal on it, except for a few items. So I'm not sure where to start. Um, let's move some things out of the way. And I'll, I think we'll start with this. So I found out a while ago that Nitram was a very, very good brand of charcoal. They make some pr pretty fancy utensils or tools to go along. And I started with the uh, starter kit, which I haven't tried yet. <coughs> And it comes with four different um, degrees of hardness. And they're all color coded from, you know, soft. Um, I think they have H, H, B, B, and B plus. So there's four sticks and a sharpening tool. So it's, it's like sanding paper and there might be a couple grades. I'm not sure, although they kind of look the same. So there's several replacement sharpening sheets that you can use and replace. And I also got recently something that I had my eyes on for quite a while. It's the stylus. So it comes with another four of these, but it also has a stylus. So you open it at the end here Maybe. <laughs> well, you basically open it and then you put your charcoal. You put it in and it goes all the way there. You secure it. That way you can just draw without getting your hands um, dirty. You can also extend it, have it go further out. That way you can uh, draw standing up, you know, it's like an, an extender, basically. And what's nice about it, too, is that, like I told you, that they're color-coded, the sticks are color-coded uh, to know which one you're using, which uh, hardness you're using. So depending on which, which stick you put in your holder, um, once it's in there, you won't see the color of the paper. So you can switch the ends, the plastic ends there, so that you know which one, uh, which stick you have in there. So I can't wait to try this. This here, sadly, I bought it about a year and a half ago. Shame on me for not having tried it yet. It's a set of 12 shades of gray. They're acrylic tubes. And these you can, I, I believe, only get them from Jerry's Artorama. And you see, you still, I still have the plastic wrapper on. But it's basically 12 tubes of different grays. You know, blue gray, brown gray, gold, uh, cold gray, green gray. And uh, I thought it would be something fun to use. Maybe not all in one painting, but as an addition to other colors. But I think I would like to try to uh, do one painting with this. So I'm going to try this pretty soon. I have to. <laughs> this I've had my eyes on for a long time too and I got that a few months ago when it finally went on sale. It's a shade and tone mixed media set and I actually have made a video and I haven't edited that video just yet so I have to do that soon. So I have played with this bef already and I really like it. So this set here by Darwent comes with a mix of ink tints and graphite tint half pans. 
and they're basically sketch tones like uh, like it says shade and tone um, to sketch a, you know a new sketchbook it's like sepias and sanguine and all those kind of colors it also comes with three pencils i've got a terracotta uh, derwent drawing which is very soft a 3b derwent graphic graphite pencil and a derwent onyx dark it's supposed to be really dark it also came with i don't know where i put it let me find this because i didn't put it back here a little water brush, a travel water brush. Darn it, I cleaned it and I don't know where I put it, but it's somewhere in there. It's just a little water brush like this right here that fits here. So anyway, um, stay tuned for the edited video that I made of this pretty soon. Also, if you've been watching my videos lately, you will see that I've been playing around with a uh, silver point. So I have a, vi a variety of um, tools, like a stylus with silver, one with uh, copper, one, one with gold. And I went to the um, Yasutomo website. Yasutomo like this. And I found that they make a couple of them that are really nice looking. And they're 99% silver. And one is one millimeter, the other one is two millimeters. So they're basically one thin and one thicker one. So as you can see, it's not graphite, it's actual silver. And to use silver or, or any other metals, you can't just use any regular paper. You need something that's coated um, so that the metal can stay on the paper. So I wanted to try their mineral paper, which is a paper uh, made from stone, basically. It's made from calcium carbonate. And it's uh, interesting because it's very slick. It's, it's super smooth. And even though it says it's 100 pounds, it's very light. It's very thin, I should say, and, and a little bit see-through. Um, let's see. I don't know if you can see because of the bright light that I'm using, but um, here you go. You can see a little bit I'd see through. So this kind of reminds me of Yupo, except Yupo is actual plastic. This is natural stuff. And unlike Yupo paper, this absorbs a little bit. Uh, so if you're going to use it for watercolor, um, it's not going to bead up all over the place. It's actually going to stay where it is. And it doesn't, it doesn't sink in as much as regular watercolor paper. So the color stayed nice and vibrant. So you can use this for all sorts of mediums. Um, I bought it to use with silver point. And actually this is what I made with it. So you can see how shiny it is because I use silver. Uh, but I thought it was a bit too thin because see how <laughs> the paper is indented now it's very strong and very resistant it's hard to tear and it's also waterproof uh, but yeah I, although the application of the silver point was uh, pretty nice and smooth and buttery i don't like that um, when i put too much pressure on it i ended up with all those indents moving on while I was on the uh, yasutomo website uh, they also carry the Niji brand. I decided to try their gouache and it says it's an artist uh, quality gouache and they're supposed to be somewhat light fast. They said they're uh, fade resistant, whatever that means. I basically just like their format. So it's a set of 12. I don't believe they're available open stock. The little box has a nice lid that locks and it can be a palette also. You have little dividers on it so it's super simple i mean the colors are you know red purple black white light green dark green but i just like that they come in a tiny little jar like this and it's nice and creamy 
I thought it might be a good format for plein, plein air painting, although they are a little heavy. Uh, but it's not, at least you don't have, I think it feels like having 12 tubes would take more space. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I just wanted to try them and I got a really good deal on those. And that's the only reason I got them. If, if they were the regular price, I probably wouldn't have bought them. So I'm going to make a video on those pretty soon as well. Talking about gouache. I wanted to try Sarah Burns Studio set of brushes. So they're, they're a gouache brush set. And if you don't know who Sarah Burns Studio is, uh, she has a YouTube channel. She's also on Instagram. I would recommend checking out her YouTube channel. At least she's got uh, really nice uh, videos. Watercolor and gouache is her, uh, are her uh, main mediums, uh, mostly gouache, and she um, her videos are great. Lots of nice tutorials. Her paintings are beautiful, and um, I just want to try the brushes she uses. So she designed them for Craft Ammo uh, website. So it comes with a print of her work and her social media info. And I've started using them, so they do come with, uh, you know, protected. But I started using them. I just put them back in the box to show you how they are. But there's a nice variety of flats. I actually like the, the skinny flat. That's a, a quarter inch. And then there's a couple of rounds. I haven't used this one yet. And then there's a nice liner here. So, so far I, I, I quite like them, but I need to use them more to get uh, a better impression of them. But I do like them a lot. I also got another set. These are pretty cheap. Um, I think they're on Jerry's Artorama, a set of effects brushes. So it tells you all how to use them in the back and I mostly got some of those for like fur texture or even uh, grass texture trees um, to use with watercolor or gouache but mostly gouache because that's what I've been playing with for quite a while now so as you can tell there's a, a bunch of different ones I've been using these two mostly for the grass lately but I've got a lot more to uh, to try. Talking about gouache, uh, again, a really good deal. I was not going to buy them because I've got quite a lot of gouache already and I already have a good variety of their regular colors. But some of you might be familiar with the um, Holbein gouache Irodori set. There, um, there's four sets basically, and they represent the four seasons. So they're supposed to be traditional colors, traditional Japanese colors uh, representing those seasons. They're really beautiful, and I checked them against the the colors I already have, and I didn't have any. Although some of them that don't have the same names, they are very similar to what I have, but. Um, I thought the colors were great and I basically had them half off, which was a really, really good saving. So here is the winter set. I'm preparing a video on these uh, separately. That's the summer set. Spring set. And the autumn set. Sticking with the Holbein brand, 
Uh, I recently went to a Holbein demonstration in an art supply store nearby and there was the YouTube artist Caution Artists at Play who was demonstrating. She, she is a uh, brand ambassador for Holbein and she was um, talking about that brand in particular along with the uh, Legion brand and um, I learned a lot. I, I was familiar with that brand, but I learned a lot of very interesting facts. And although I was I, I was mostly familiar with the um, colored pencils and the gouache, um, I found out that the uh, Holbein watercolors they do not have any oxgall in them, and so they do not spread as much on the paper and uh, so you can control them better and so she was saying that since she really likes detailed work uh, she thought they were really good for her style and I was very interested so I got a little set of 12 and um, again it was a deal I might not have bought it if it was not a deal but they're really small tubes that said, uh, Holbein products are usually very pigmented. So even if you try with uh, small tubes, they will last quite a while. They will go a long way. So I got some little palettes uh, to put the, these in because I I like to paint with watercolors from uh, half pans. I like them dry. So I made a little color chart. And so yes, there are only tw uh, 12 here and I have uh, 20 wells in here. So I added, I, I had a, an extra, actually a couple of extra colors that I decided to add. Just a couple of uh, random Holbein watercolor tubes. And I thought that I didn't have any cool yellows. So I got, I added a yellow, uh, a lemon yellow from Sennelier since I had an extra spot and I thought it would uh, at least help with this palette to have a wider range of colors. So here they are. I think they're very pretty. Um, I can't wait to start painting with them now that they've dried a bit. Again, a video coming up. <laughs> Lots of videos in the near future. And this I bought maybe, I don't know, a year ago. It's a call. It's um, a set of uh, pastel colors, which is really pretty, and I haven't used them yet. Shame on me! But again, I got them because they were on sale, knowing that I would use them eventually. And I put these guys right here. Uh, I added uh, one of the colors. That's also a pastel color that a, little, uh, a spare tube that I had, I added to the, the set of 12. So I have 13 here, but look how pretty. They're a little bit more opaque, not all of them, but that's kind of normal because pastels usually have uh, more white added to them. So it makes the colors a bit more opaque. So still talking about Holbein, during that presentation, we got to try, actually we got to try a bunch of uh, colors. We got to try the watercolors, the gouache and the acrylic gouache. Um, and we had some uh, really nice Holbein brushes. They're Holbein gold to play with. And uh, I really like them. So I got a set of five. Um, I can't wait. I'm going to use them to uh, play with uh, the watercolors I just got. And so there's, I got a um, half inch flat, a quarter inch flat, and a size eight round, a size five, and a size one. A tiny, tiny little one. So I can't wait. I got, this is my one of my favorite washi tape by Holbein. Uh, I like it, it's kind of transparent. And so it doesn't distract you like, a, you know, washi tapes usually. Um, and it just comes off really nicely and it leaves a nice clear mark. I like those. Uh, what else? I got a few mediums. So 
So I got some ox gall and like I mentioned, Holbein doesn't put any in their watercolors. So this would be fun to make the watercolors flow a lot more, especially when you do wet on wet. So for nice effects and you can use it probably with any brand. And also when you use a paper that uh, is sized differently and you're having a hard time make your, your paint flow on that paper, this would probably help. You just add it to your paint on your palette. I got something that is pretty cool too. It's a watercolor medium. This is a little thicker and again you use it on the palette with mixed with your paint and the watercolor medium makes the paint flow better with your brush. In other words, you can create better details with this. It says it fa facilitates fine line and stroke development by improving flow. So that's nice. And I, tr I tried it during the presentation. It was fun. And I wanted to play with this because it's intriguing. I, I hadn't played with it during the presentation. It was there, but I, I didn't. And this is gum Arabic paste. And you basically use it with watercolor, probably other mediums too, but to get an uh, impasto effect with your watercolors. So make it nice and thick. Um, <laughs> so I, I thought this would be fun to play with. We're reaching almost the end. So I wanted to try the acrylic inks. So I got a few just to try. I get some random colors and a black and a white because the black and the white say super opaque white and super opaque black. So I want to try these two. They have a little, a little bowl in there to mix it. And I got a phthalo turquoise and a, oh, I don't even know how to pronounce this, but you can read it for yourself. Some kind of yellow. It looked really pretty on the website. <laughs> and I, I wanted to try them because I do like acrylic inks and they're supposed to be a bit more opaque than other brands and, f and, and flow really well. And they're supposed to be great also with air, an airbrush. And uh, I do have one that I haven't tried yet. And so I thought it would be maybe a good opportunity to try my airbrush with these. And finally, I got this, but I was sent the wrong thing. This is a color, colorless acrylic ink. I'm not sure what to do with it. Probably add pigment to it and turn it into acrylic ink. However, what I had ordered was um, opaque, colorless opaque uh, medium, which is supposed to make your acrylic inks more opaque. So they sent the wrong thing. We're working on uh, getting them switched. So hopefully it'll happen pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, I think that's about it. So exciting new videos soon. <laughs> Some are almost ready. I just need to take the time to to edit them. But I've been playing a lot with those things, those supplies. So come back soon and then uh, you'll get to see all these supplies at work. Or at play, actually. <laughs> Anyways, I have to stop talking now. <laughs> Thank you all for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you soon with another video. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.